witnesses. So, um, let's go through this. If I have g of f of 3y, and I tell you that f of x equals x squared plus x yeah. minus 12, and g of x equals negative 2x plus 1. Okay, so let's go, yes? <laughs> so what I have is f of x equals x squared plus x minus 12, and then I have g of x equals negative 2x plus 1. So the first thing, guys, if you look inside these parentheses, I have to figure out what f of 3y is. So if I know that f of x equals x squared plus x minus 12, if I want to figure out what f of 3y is, just like I would use with any other number, I need to now plug that in to my formula. Okay, So what I'm going to do is now say 3y squared plus 3y minus 12. All right, 3y squared is equal to 9y squared plus 3y minus 12. Okay, Now we know that that is what f of 3y equals. Does that make sense? Okay, Now it's saying, what is g of f of 3y? So what that represents, g of f of 3y what you're simply doing is plugging this into your function of g of x. So if I say, what is g of x? That means I'm going to say 2, or sorry, negative 2 times f of 3y. Then plus 1. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do we know what f of 3y is? Yeah, we figured f of 3y right here. f of 3y is 9y squared plus 3y minus 12. So therefore, we say negative 2 times 9y squared plus 3y minus 12 plus 1. Then I destroyed a property. So that's going to equal negative 18y squared plus 3y plus 24 plus 1. Now I can combine the 24 and the 1. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. And that's a plus 24. Now I can contribute 18y squared minus 6y plus 25. And that would be your final answer. Yes. Okay? Oh, Mr. Yep.